I film most of my videos in 4K. I also deliver most of my videos in 4K, but I almost never edit my videos at that full 4K resolution. I always lower it to something a little bit more manageable. And it's not because of lack of hardware. I've got an absolute beast of a PC which eats 4K for breakfast. I've also got one of the new MacBook M1 Pros, which is perfectly capable of editing in 4K as well. So why don't I? Well, it's really simple. Efficiency. 4K is just that much harder to handle than a lower resolution, something like 1080p. And even if you're on an absolute beast of a rig, a PC or a laptop, there are still benefits to actually dropping that resolution to something a little bit more manageable. So what exactly is resolution? Well, video is just a bunch of still images stacked together to form a moving image or video. How many still images you have per second is known as your frame rate, 24, 25, 30, 60, etc. The resolution simply refers to the size of those still images or video. Simple, right? Oh, and why are we in the kitchen? No other reason than I fancied a coffee. Come on. This is an A5 piece of paper, same size as a sort of a birthday card. This represents 1080p. This is an A3 piece of paper, like a sort of poster size. This represents 4K. Conveniently, an A3 piece of paper is four times the size of an A5 piece of paper, so this is actually a pretty accurate representation of 4K versus 1080p. Now, in a really simplified version, what your machine is having to do is to color these in for every frame within a second. So if you're running at 25 frames per second like I do, you're either coloring in this 25 times per second or this 25 times per second. And naturally, as you've guessed, it's realistically gonna take about four times as long to color in the bigger A3 piece of paper than it is to color in the much smaller A5 piece of paper. Take this guy, for example. He's a beast, he's full of beans, and he's raring to go. He represents your high-end machine, your MacBook Pro or your big beastly PC. He can happily color in 25 of those A5 pieces of paper every second with no issues whatsoever. Doesn't even break a sweat, smashes them out time after time, just taking it easy, job done. You replace those A5 pieces of paper with A3 pieces of paper, i.e. 4K, and he can still do it. It's breaking more of a sweat, working a little bit harder, but he can still do it time and time again, no issues whatsoever. That's when you get smooth playback in DaVinci Resolve. That's when you get full 25 frames per second, whether you're on 1080p or 4K. There's no drop frames. Your machine is able to do 25 frames every single time, no problem whatsoever. So what does it look like on a slightly older, slower device? Now let's take this guy. He's a little bit older, a little bit slower, a little bit more tired. He represents a slightly older workstation. Now he can just about manage those 25 A5 or 1080p pieces of paper every second. He's sweating, he's grinding, but he can manage it. He just finishes the 25 on the dot before the next 25 turns up. So what happens when you swap out those A5 1080p pieces of paper for A3 4K pieces of paper? Well, simply, he can't do them all within that one second time frame. If he could manage 25 before, but these are four times bigger, realistically, he's only gonna be able to manage six of them. So 25 arrive, he colors in six, he has to bin the rest, because you can't do them. Another 25 arrive, he colors in six, you have to bin the rest, and then on you go. That's when you get dropped frames within DaVinci Resolve. So your device simply can't generate the required number of frames within the time frame, so it has to drop frames, giving you choppy playback and just generally making your editing experience really, really miserable. If you're on a higher end device, yes, you are managing to do those 4K 25 frames per second, so you get smooth playback, but your device is just working harder. If you're on a PC, that means that everything's running hotter, your fans are kicking in more, which is making your PC noisier, and you'll potentially be paying higher electricity bills. If you're on a laptop, that means you'll get shorter battery life. I created two duplicate timelines. One is a 1080p timeline and the other one is a 4K timeline. I then let each of the timelines play through the full 30 minutes in real time and then measured the battery life. After the 30 minutes, the 4K started at 51, ended up at 40% battery life. The 1080p timeline started at 51% and ended up at 43%. So 3%, that doesn't seem like a big deal, but that's over just 10% of the entire battery life. So if we multiply that 
to cover the entire length of a single charge on battery, we get roughly 270 minutes, which is four and a half hours of editing time when using the 4K timeline, whereas using the 1080p timeline, we get roughly 375 minutes, which equates to a little over six and a bit hours. And DaVinci Resolve makes it so easy. There are a bunch of different ways to actually lower your timeline resolution to something like 1080p without actually affecting the end result. So you can still export your project in 4K, it'll look just as good, but you've made the whole editing process that much smoother. The first one, you can create proxies. Proxies are these small copies of your original source material that are easier for your device to handle and generally run at a lower resolution. Now, I personally don't use proxies that often, but if you wanna know more about them, here's a really great video by the Creative Video Tips channel. I've linked it down in the description below so you can check that out if you wanna know more about proxies. Now, why don't I use proxies? Because they take time to create and I don't want to add anything into my workflow that actually adds additional time unless I absolutely have to and as of yet, I don't have that need. The second option is to use the timeline proxy mode, which essentially just drops the resolution of your timeline to either half your original timeline resolution settings or a quarter of those original timeline settings. Now this is the one that I recommend you try because it's super quick, super easy to toggle on and off and can have some really great results. To do it, open DaVinci Resolve, make sure your timeline is set to a normal 4K resolution. Then you just go to playback, timeline proxy modes, and you can switch between off, half, or quarter. And then there's the third option where you manually set your timeline resolution to be 1080p, even though you plan to deliver in 4K. You just create a new timeline, set it as 1080p, and then bump it up to 4K before you actually render the project out. Now, in theory, this is probably the worst solution. It's certainly not as easy to toggle on as the timeline proxy mode, but that's the one I personally favor, and I'll explain why towards the end of this video. It's a really awesome little workflow tip, so make sure you stick around for that. But what do you actually lose out on? Well, you lose a little bit of clarity within your preview window, but other than that, you won't really lose that much at all. If you're just cutting and editing, putting your timeline together, does that little bit of clarity in your preview window matter anyway? To me, it certainly doesn't, not when you compare it to the benefit. But here's a good example. Take this image here. View full screen, this is a 4K image. Now let's switch it over to a 1080p image. Now, depending on what device you're viewing this video on, you could probably see a bit of a difference between those two images. But unless you're editing in DaVinci Resolve with a second monitor set up as a full screen sort of clean feed preview, you're not gonna be editing in full screen, right? Instead, you'll be editing with the preview window, which is realistically probably only taking up about a quarter of your monitor at most. So let's do that same test again. But this time, look up here, this is the 4K one, whereas this one is the 1080p one. And even if you're on a 4K monitor, I'd hazard a guess it's pretty hard to tell the difference between the two. But are there times when viewing your preview window in full 4K makes sense? Yes, of course there are. Here are a few examples. This isn't a 100% list. It's just a few examples to give you an idea where that might be necessary. The first one, something simple like transforming. Let's say you're trying to zoom in or punch into an image. You need to see how far you can go in before your image starts to degrade. Viewing that in its full resolution makes sense. So you can see all the detail and you can see if you can get away with that level of zooming. Color grading, not necessarily for the color grading itself, but for things like sharpening, noise reduction, face refinement. You're gonna want as much quality, as much sharpness as possible so you can see that you're not over sharpening things, you're not messing with people's skin too much, or you're not trying to get rid of noise, which actually isn't there. And another example is something like titles. You can get away with smaller titles in a 4K image than you can on a 1080p image because they don't start to get as fuzzy. So you may want to see the 4K image just to make sure that your text is still legible. But that's when the timeline proxy mode is so, so useful. You can really quickly just turn it to off, have a look at your image, make sure it looks good, turn it back to half or quarter, and then carry on with your editing, knowing that you're not pushing your machine unnecessarily to the max. So what's this magic workflow tip I mentioned at the beginning of this video? I use timeline templates. Now I've talked about timeline templates in the past because they're incredibly awesome. I've made a video which I've linked up here or down in the description, you can go check that out. I'm gonna show you how they work really quickly right now. On my desktop, I've got this. It just says YouTube. And this is a timeline template that I've created. 
I'm just going to double click this and DaVinci Resolve is going to open up on its own like so. We're going to jump into the Edit tab. Now I didn't even have to select anything within the Project Manager. DaVinci Resolve opens, it automatically creates a new project and then it opens up that timeline ready to go. So as you can see on this timeline, I've got a couple of tracks. I've got a B-roll, I've got an adjustment track and I've got my A-roll. I've then got a couple of audio tracks, voiceover, music. I've got an adjustment clip which has already got my standard color grade applied so that I can just drop some footage on here and start working. And as you've probably guessed, if I right click on this tutorial, go to timelines, timeline settings, you can see this is set to 1920 by 1080, 25 frames per second. So all I need to do then is import some media and start editing. So I've got that timeline template on my desktop PC and on my laptop. Whenever I want to start a project, I just double click, it opens up Resolve, the timeline's there, I just import media, I start working and I know straight away it's already set to 1080p so I don't need to worry about changing any settings, I just edit and I'm good to go. Before I actually render this project out, the only thing I need to do, go to the tutorial within the media pool, so this timeline here, right click, timelines, timeline settings, timeline resolution, I'm going to bump that up to my Ultra HD, my 4K right here, click on OK. Now my timeline is a full 4K timeline resolution. So when I go to deliver, it's already got resolution 4K and it's good to go. As long as I stick to the same aspect ratio, nothing's gonna shift when I bump it up from 1080p to 4K. All my titles will be in the same place, all my transitions will be fine, my effects, everything will just fit into place, look exactly the same, but the resolution will be 4K rather than 1080p. So then I can just export it and be good to go. So how do you actually create them? Well, it's incredibly easy. This is a brand new project in DaVinci Resolve. All I'm gonna do in my media pool here, I'm gonna right click timelines, create a new timeline, give this a name. So I'm gonna call this one just demo. I can give myself a few additional video tracks, audio tracks, change the audio track type if I want to. I'm then gonna untick this use project settings. We're gonna to go to format. I'm gonna make sure my timeline resolution is set to wherever I want it to be. So in my instance, I want this to be 1080p and I want my timeline to be 25 frames per second. So I just change the timeline and the frame rate to match whatever I want it to be when I first open this timeline template. Then I just amend any of the things that I want to amend on this timeline. So I could change the name of this video track to B-roll. I could change this one to be adjustments. I could add any titles. So let's just grab a title and we'll put this on the timeline. I could change this to be Mr. Alex Tech. We could put things on the timeline, we could apply audio effects, we could do whatever we want. For my color grade, all I did was I added an adjustment clip onto my timeline, went into the color page, added, let's just drop a lot on there for a, a quick example, and then we go back to edit, and then that adjustment clip already has the LUT on there. I could then either put all my footage underneath, or when I come into it, I simply copy the color grade from the adjustment clip onto my footage and I'm good to go. So mess around with this timeline, getting it exactly as you want it to be the starting point whenever you open up this project and you want to start editing. Once you've done that, you just need to export it as a timeline template. Within the media pool, I've got my demo timeline here. We're gonna right click, timelines, export, and then we just need to select this top one, the AAF XML, EDL and then the DRT, which stands for DaVinci Resolve Timeline. Give that a click. We've got file name, demo.drt. I'm gonna put this one on my desktop just for the example. Click on save and now that's it. If I close DaVinci Resolve, I've now got my demo.drt. I can double click. DaVinci Resolve is gonna open straight up. We'll jump onto the edit tab. I've got all my tracks ready to go. I've got my Mr. Alex Tech title here and I've got my adjustment clip with my LUT on it ready to go. So that's why I use that method. But if you don't wanna do that, just start using the timeline proxy mode to get some instant wins as well. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you're gonna try editing at lower resolutions in the future. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. I'll catch you next time.